Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the course of computational finance. Today we have question number 25. That question is based on materials discussed in lecture number 11. The question of today is, what is pathwise sensitivity? So calculation of sensitivities is a very important element if we are talking about hedging of our portfolio. Hedging means reducing the risks of our portfolio. So we are insensitive to market fluctuations. So if we sell, for example, a derivative, we would like to set up a hedging portfolio such that the overall risk related to the derivative and hedging portfolio, if we put it together, then this composition will be immune to market fluctuations. Whatever happens in the market, we don't want to have any PNL or movements of our uh, value of our portfolio, overall portfolio. Then we have a perfect hedge. This means that our profits are made based on a premium that will charge uh, initially if we sell a derivative. And then once we set up a hedge, then we essentially can keep the premium at the option expiry because our hedge will offset the risks associated the value from the derivative. This means that we can stay, we can keep the, the premium. Uh, the discussion of these hedges, uh, we can re please revisit lecture number 11. I put a lot of details in there. So the trivial approach, if we have a, a derivative and there is some parameter, for example, theta, so we have a value of on our derivative and there is a parameter theta, we, to see, we would like to see what is the sensitivity of our derivative with respect to some model parameter. This, for example, could be a, a sigma volatility, but also initial stock. Trivial approach to calculate this sensitivity would be to simply apply a finite difference. So what we could do, we can approximate that by saying v, this would be a theta plus some delta hat minus v from theta, and then we divide by delta hat. So this would be trivial uh, approach to calculate this type of sensitivity. However, as you can see here, of course, everything in this framework will depend on the calculation of this uh, value of a delta theta plus delta hat minus v theta. So this means that we have to calculate in order to get approximations for the sensitivity, we need to find out when to calculate this value of derivative twice. This means that if calculations of this derivative is computationally expensive, then we have this, this is rather significant cost. Number of parameters, maybe it's not large for your model, but if you consider all sorts of market data, for example, construction of a yield curve, this every instrument will need to be used in the calculation of this sensitivity. So then this means that you need to calculate number of market instruments or model parameters twice. The sensitivity has to be calculated twice. Of course, in this case, we could benefit because this value will be fixed, right? But in a, overall, we have an additional cost. There is additional problem with these calculations of those sensitivities is that uh, those could be very uh, fluctuating. They could be sensitive to this uh, shock size. So this means that accuracy of this approximation uh, can strongly depend on this uh, delta hat. This means that if you change slightly this delta hat, the results could be uh, much more off. Uh, this is typically not good because uh, if you are setting up a hedge, you would like to have hedge as accurate as possible. If you perform any sort of approximations in uh, calculations of sensitivities, then this will uh, immediately have impact on your hedging portfolio. So it's very important to have these sensitivities calculated as accurately as possible. So pathwise sensitivity is a method of calculating uh, those, those risks, those sensitivities in more accurate way. So using some mathematical trick, we can actually find out that uh, those uh, risks, the sensitivities uh, will be much more stable compared to the finite difference. So this is essentially, let's say, our base case. This typically in a financial industry, if you calculate Greeks, you always start with, let's say, brute force approach. And then we are looking for some numerical methods that I can provide better convergence and higher accuracy results. So what we will do here, we will start with a um, definition of our uh, derivative. So we have derivative of our portfolio with respect to parameter theta. And this is simply derivative with respect to theta. And then we write the definition. So the V is the expectation of the discounted future payoff. So this is definition of our uh, value at time t0. So this V here, 
this value at time t0. This is very important because we are looking at sensitivity at time t0, a two days value. And however, here, this, is the, this depends on the maturity time uh, t. And then we discount from time t to two time t0, which is indicated here by this filtration. Now what we will do, we will exchange the differentiation with integration. So expectation is an integral over the density. So this expectation here, we can write, of course, as uh, v t x over m t times f. This will be our stock of x dx. So what we will do in the first step, we will exchange differentiation with integration. And then what we have with expectation of this quantity. So the question is, at this point, we haven't gained anything. But the question is, can we do something about this quantity? Can we calculate some elements of this derivative analytically? If yes, this would be great benefit because we don't need to follow any more brute force approach as we have done here. But we can use some kind of, kind of analytical expressions in order to get this uh, value for this expectation. So whenever you calculate something in computational finance, actually in general, and you know something about expressions that you're dealing with, and you can calculate some elements, at least some elements of this expression analytically, and you can take it outside, then this always will indicate that you will improve to some extent some e converges somewhere. And this is exactly what happens here. So depending whether we can calculate some elements here analytically, we can improve the convergence of the method. And it actually happens that uh, because actually depending on type of payoff, those derivatives can be calculated uh, analytically. So let's take a look here. So assuming constant interest rate first, so we take uh, this MT outside of our expectation. So this is actually the money savings account. So we're discounting uh, outside. And then uh, if we are looking for sensitivity uh, with respect to some parameter theta, then we know that our stock, our payoff will not depend on a parameter theta only stock will depend on theta. Hardly ever you have a payoff that will depend on some parameter. Payoff typically depends on the underlying. And underlying in this case is stock. So we calculate derivative with respect to stock, and then if it's a chain rule, derivative of a stock with respect to parameter theta. So this is equivalent with this expression here. If we go on, so this is by simply taking a call option as an example, and we take a Black-Scholes uh, solution for stock, then we end up with, um, the, we have this expression for stock. And of course, depending, let me highlight this better here. And depending on the payoff, we can actually calculate this derivative explicitly. So here, if we have a derivative of V with respect to S at time T, because now we are looking at maturity. So this is not at time T0, this is at the maturity. So this is this stock here. This is simply indicator function indicator that stock will be greater than k. And then if we would like to have uh, other parameters, so now we can consider parameter theta to be s t0 or sigma, this is also parameter, then those derivatives are also given here explicitly. So we just simply take this expression and we calculate sensitivities, uh, derivatives to those parameters. So this is also uh, straightforward then this means that we can actually everything we can substitute into that expectation. So then for delta, we have sensitivity of our variance, so derivative with respect to uh, initial stock, is simply expectation, and then we have indicator function, and then it's in this exponent, and this exponent resembles the stock uh, of our process stock divided by st0. So this means that if you like to calculate the sensitivity of delta, what we need to do is to, of course, discounting is constant, so it's irrelevant, but then we need to only calculate expectation of a stock, given that stock is greater than some strike. So this expression, you see, it's much simpler than if you would follow this type of strategy here where we calculate option value twice, and we are still sensitive to the shock size. This is what we don't want. This is the discretization or the finite difference this is something we don't want to have in our framework. In this case, we don't have the sensitivity at all. We just calculate expectation uh, of this quantity. So if we have a stock uh, Monte Carlo paths, we can simply calculate this expectation. And the same for a Viga, uh, after some just simple calculations, the same very similar expression holds that the value, the Viga 
for under Black Scholes case can be simply calculated as this expectation. So we have exactly common factor here, and then only this expression here is slightly different. However, if you have paths for your stock under the maturity time t, then uh, basically you can just simply use them in the calculation of this expectation. It, actually, in this exp in this case, this expectation you could even solve analytically. That should not be a problem. And of course, this is true because we know for in the case of Black Scholes model, we know. Uh, the Greeks analytically. However, if you would consider more advanced model, like using, for example, Heston model, which is also discussed in lecture number 11, then also you can find some of those derivatives uh, analytically. So this expectation uh, are also given. So for that, I recommend to revisit lecture number 11. And these are some numerical experiments. Uh, more of them uh, are covered in the, in the book and also in the lecture that where uh, the the convergence or the comparison against the finite difference is presented. And there is clearly stated that actually the results clearly show that if you use pathwise sensitivity, you have much greater convergence with respect to the number of um, convergence with respect to number of Monte Carlo paths. This means you can have a much fewer paths in order to get higher quality results. So this is the, 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 the whole story about the pathwise sensitivity. The whole idea is about uh, exchanging of expectations and derivatives. Once you remember that, that's basically the key element of this whole methodology. And the purpose of that is to gain accuracy. So by, for example, reduction of Monte Carlo paths, you may keep the same level of, uh, of, uh, of approximation. And that, this method also allows you to reduce number of evaluations because we don't need to follow the final difference when we have to evaluate option price twice. We can only do it once. And this is another benefit of this method. I think it uh, should be enough. Uh, if you have more questions, please write them in the comments. Um, then I will provide you more uh, insight. Uh, thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye.